Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Wingate Solutions. I hope you're doing well. I want to start out by saying thank you to everybody that's been giving us so much support, both with the website and with the YouTube channel. It's really been humbling and a blessing, and it's kind of wild. Like my wife and I were really surprised how much traffic the website's been getting, and uh, it's really, like I said, humbling. I really appreciate it. Anyway, the reason why you clicked on this video, my go-to carbine. We're going to get into it, deep dive, meat and potatoes, of why I run what I run. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get after it. All right, guys, hopefully the setup here on the tripod kind of works for me. I think it's kind of cool. It makes it easy for me to kind of point stuff out and go hands free on this. But uh, and I'll do some close ups if needed. But anyway, I'm going to start in no particular orders, kind of go through the whole thing, deep dive into the whole process behind this, why I choose these components. And don't just copy what I pick, what I choose. Make sure your rifle suits your needs because we're different people. We live in different areas. Our mindset behind these rifles. Maybe different, probably are different, probably should be different, right? But this is just my general purpose setup that suits my needs as of now. Um, subject to change anytime in the future as other things come out and as I change my mind on certain things or as my experiences change, right? So always have that mindset. Don't be just stuck on one way of thinking when it comes to this stuff. Anyway, all right. First thing I'm going to talk about before I can get into my rifle. We're all built different. Weight, size, length, all those things are going to be different for us. So I'm going to build a different rifle for myself than like a rifle I'm going to build for my wife who's like 5152, right? I'm not going to expect her to be able to handle the same rifle I can handle. Also, you might want to build a rifle around the idea of being lightweight for other purposes. Like you intend to carry it a long time. You intend to have that thing strapped to you 24 hours a day, right? Some guys are going to be more weight conscious than others. I don't tend to go that much into weight as a big deal for me, for my purposes. Um, so just bear that in mind. If I was building a rifle for my wife, I would probably be considering barrel thickness and rail length because she doesn't need a 15 inch rail. I'd probably make sure I have a lightweight optic on it. And I'd probably have a 14.5 or maybe a 16 at most, right? But for me, I like my full length rifles. But anyway, so this is a 16 inch Hanson profile mid length barrel. I really like these barrels. They're one of my go to's. I've had really good luck with them. I like getting them with the gas block pinned, right? So gas blocks pretty much come in three styles you have your clamp on, you have your set screw, then you have your pin style or pinned and set screw with which is what this one is. The clamp on, they're not really that popular. Just set screw. If you're going to do that, that is fine. But I heavily recommend making sure the barrel is dimpled. At least one of those holes for those set screws, you need to dimple so that that set screw is something to bite into. Um, and it's still possible that it can back off, then your gas block could come loose. And that could be a major problem. If you have serious gas issues that are kind of random and came out of nowhere, Definitely check and make sure your gas block isn't shifting on you or anything like that. But in general, a pinned gas block, like a standard A2 has two pins or something like this that has a roll pin through the gas block and it's going through the barrel as well, is going to be your strongest bet for gas blocks. So I like that the Hanson profile comes with that pinned gas block. That's a big plus for me. I also like the tapered profile of the Hanson barrels. 
Uh, I hate government profile barrels. I try not to buy them. Um, I got a couple, but that's just because I've had them, had them forever and they're cheap and they just work. But for a build that I'm going to do from the ground up, I want a tapered profile for me. So it still ends up being about a mid-weight profile barrel, which works well for me with suppressors. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, like an H bar, a heavy barrel, like a heavy fluted or like a, like a special purpose profile barrel. Those are really nice barrel profiles. If you're only going to be using this gun as more like an SPR, right? So for me, like a handy general purpose, I like that Hanson profile because it's right in the middle and they're cheap. You know, generally speaking, they're a lot cheaper than a lot of the other ones. They do offer their MOA guarantee. They're by no means like a premium barrel manufacturer but I've had nothing but good luck out of them. So uh, do your research, kind of, like I said, barrel, bulk hair group, they're the meat potatoes of the heart and soul of your gun. You need those to be quality. But I like the Ballistic Advantage Hanson Profile barrels. I like mid-length because it runs smooth. And I like 16-inch guns. Um, and again, this is going to be your decision on that. A lot of guys really like shorter guns. And maybe if you're a smaller guy, 14.5, 13.7, 13.9, Pin and welded might be a good uh, setup for you. Me, I like a full length 16 with a can. If I wasn't running suppressed, I'd probably be running an 18 inch um, just because I'd rather have that velocity and then I'd like to step up to that rifle length gas system. So if you're not running suppressed and you don't mind a little bit of the length, um, I would go 16 or even 18 would be a cool suggestion for if you t intend to use this as like a do-all can reach out and touch things, but also is still handy enough um, for doing anything like home defense, things like that. You really, it just comes down to understanding how to run a rifle. You don't need a super short rifle uh, for home defense or CQB stuff, right? Marines are running around Fallujah with a 20 inch barrel, you know, doing work. It comes down to training. Anyway, here I am getting lost into wherever. I told you it was going to be a deep dive. So, Hanson Profile Barrel Suppressor. So, I run a handful of different suppressors. For this build, I wanted it direct thread. Throw the can on and I leave it on. So this is a YHM Turbo K with a direct, th direct thread mount. So my intention with this was I wanted it as short as possible, as lightweight as possible. You know, generally speaking, right? I know it's, it's not like a titanium can. It was a budget can. They come in around like 400 bucks. Threw the direct thread adapter on. Sold the brake that it came with to get some of my money back and now i have you know barely longer than like an extended flash hider but i have a suppressor so i've re been really liking the yhm turbo k i know now they've come out with a new model that is supposedly lower back pressure i don't have any experience with it mine's uh the second version i think i think there's a third version out now so do some research on that i really do like the yhm cans because they're relatively affordable the direct thread. So to get this to run real nice and smooth, I have a BRT, uh, easy tune, I think it is, gas tube. So it's set from the factory to have a smaller diameter to run more efficiently with the can. So because I'm not swapping it out off this gun, I'm not running uh, QD or anything, I wanted this gun to run suppressed all the time and run really well, not be overgassed. So it has that easy tune gas tube on it and then i'm running a i think a t uh i think an h2 in the back i was running an h1 for a bit and i just swapped swapped to an h2 and it's been running great it's been running real smooth they have amazing ejection pattern out of it it's a real smooth gun now uh and i told you i'm gonna jump around a little bit so in no particular order but we're talking gas systems here so that h2 and then i have a damage industries buffer spring in it so it's that uh I forget what it's called. It's like the fancier chrome silicon or something like that spring wire where it's kind of like piano spring wire. Um, supposedly way more lifespan out of it. And uh, they run really smooth. I've had really good luck. They're relatively inexpensive as well. So I run those Damage Industries buffer springs in all my rifles. I really like them. So I recommend highly. All right. For lights. There's a lot of different lights out there. I like stream lights for the price. Uh, if you want a surefire, go that way. Mod light, you know, cloud. They, there's some uh, real nice lights out there and they get a little pricey. This one's an Arasaka light body. Um, still runs on the surefire mounts. 
So the traditional mounts, not the swivel mounts. It's uh, their 18650 body. So it can run an 18650 rechargeable uh, battery or two CR123As, which I think is cool. I like the dual fuel style of this. It just has a surefire clicky tail cap. I'm not a huge fan of pressure pads. Um, they're fine. Like I don't not recommend them. I just like to have just a simple uh, rear switch on mine. I like that a lot. Uh, for the head, I had to write it down because I forgot the number, so I want to tell you guys the right one. But it's the Malkoff E2 XTL. So this whole light comes in a bundle package from Arasaka. You can get everything. But the Malkoff heads are really underrated, um, and they're relatively inexpensive compared to some of the more expensive lights, right? Like the mod lights and those sort of things. But it's only about 500 lumens, but it's like 55,000 candela. So it's a high throw light. So it's not going to have a lot of spill. Um, it's definitely a better light for like outdoors, seeing pretty far. It's got a real nice hot uh, center beam of light to it. And I've had good luck with it. Um, it's the only one I own. So it's on this rifle because it's probably one of my most solid lights I have. Got a lot of uh, Streamlight uh, Protax and things like that. And they run really well too, the HLXs. HLX Pro, that one just came out. I'd recommend that. I have one of those. That that one's got a real nice output to it. Um, yeah, light cap on it. All right. Handguard. Turn it around so you guys can see it. <laughs> so there's two handguards that I like to run on my rifles. And there's a million out there that are nice, so just pick your flavor of handguard. But I really like this CMT rail, cross machine and tool, or the Bravo Company BCM MCMR rails. They're my kind of two go-tos. So this is, um, I think, I forget what it's called. The CMT, like, it's kind of like the desert dirt color from Geisley, but it's, it's like called dirt something else. It's their brown anodized rail. Um, and I really like it so far. It has a nice, solid lockup. I like the design. You don't, have to tune, you don't have to time it or anything like that. I've had really good luck with the CMT rails, so I recommend them. And they're not too expensive either. They're a little cheaper than some of the other ones. Uh, I like running hand stops. So this is just a weekend warrior customs hand stop. Works really well for me. I am affiliated with them. That's my brother's company. So I'm a little biased. He makes me stuff that I like. <laughs> so go over and check out weekend warrior customs. Shameless plug. Uh, mag pole bipod mount. Um, I'll throw a bipod on here from time to time, but not too often. I like the ability to throw it on. doesn't add too much weight. Again, if you're super weight conscious, you might not want to have these sort of things on there, but I like it. It doesn't bother me. Forgot to tell you how I mount my light. Um, I really like the Arasaka mounts. There's a few other ones that are really nice. I've had really good luck with these 45 degree Arasakas. And that's going to be dependent on if you're running like lasers on top or what kind of rail you have, how tight you want the light to the rail, that sort of thing, what side you want it on. Do your research on the light mounts. But I've really, really liked the simplicity of this 45 degree Arasaka. They're real nice. All right. Before I forget this guy, just Magpul Pro backup sights. So some people are going to question, well, why do you need backup sights when you have LPVO and have a red dot on top? This would be the third aiming solution I have. And the answer to that is, yeah, I don't. I don't need them. Um, it's kind of proven at this point that it's just a redundancy on top of other redundancies. The quality optics that are out nowadays, you don't need backup sights. However, I like having them. It doesn't hurt anything, barely adds any weight. Again, I don't mind a little bit extra weight on my rifle. I have them already. Uh, they don't bother me. Is it something you need to start training? No. If you can get a quality optic and it gets you out there and you can get some more ammo right now to practice with that rifle i'd recommend that and then if you have time throw some op uh throw some backup irons on if you can make sure you zero home uh and uh they're just they're nice to have do i intend to rip this optic off and use my irons in the heat of the moment probably not but they don't hurt having on there right all right moving on all right I'm gonna jump around, and we'll get to the we'll get to the best at the end. Stock, I like the Magpul CTRs. 
There's a million stocks out there. Guys have different personal preference on them. Just pick what you like. But I like the CTRs. They have a decent lockup on them. And uh, I've had good luck with them. K2 Plus Grip. I like the rubberized grip. Again, that's going to be personal preference. And I really like the K2 grip angle. I didn't for a while because I always used the, uh, the standard MOE grips. They're great too. But once I really kind of got used to this K grip, I understand why they're so popular. I love them. All right. Triggers real quick. Everybody likes to likes to have this, see this. I am a big fan of the LaRue MBT2S, I believe it is. Um, they're amazing. They've been out for a while. They came out as kind of a competitor to like the Geisleys at a fraction of the price. I think they've gone up a little bit from where they were. They used to be like 75 bucks or something like that. Um, but they're still, in my opinion, the best bang for the buck trigger that I recommend if somebody wants a two-stage trigger. They come with two springs. At least it did a couple years ago. I haven't bought one for a while. Um, a lighter one and a heavier one. I run the heavier spring because I like the reset it gives me. It gives me a real nice, crisp reset. And, uh, and it's not that heavy. It kind of gets it closer to a mil spec weight, I would say, but it's real clean. I like it because it's flat faced and it just works really well, but it has that first stage take up and then you get a little bit more pressure and it's like snapping a carrot, like a baby carrot or something like that. Um, is how I could kind of explain it. The, uh, the guys leaves are going to be a little bit cleaner, but you're also paying like three times the price, at least double the price. So yeah, I really like that. BCM mod for B medium latch. I really like the medium latch. Personal preference. I don't run ambies. Um, and uh, I like that medium smaller latch because it doesn't get snagged on my gear, but it's still big enough for me to get on it when I need to. I either run this or mil spec. And if you're going to run mil spec, just make sure it's 70 75 because there are some 60 61 aluminum ones out there and they're going to have issues uh, after a while. So make sure it's 70 75. You do not want to bend your charging handle. It's kind of a, one of the most important features on the gun is to have a good quality charging handle. But it doesn't mean you got to spend a million bucks. Just make sure it's a good quality mil spec one if you're going a little bit cheaper, um, is my recommendation. <laughs> I think what everybody's probably waiting for is my optic setup. So I'm an optic guy. I'm going to say that. And going on with the content in the future, I intend to do more optic related content um, because I've been known to kind of deep dive into different optics platforms. And uh, this is a very personal preference. Right now, well, in general, the optic crazes cycle through they come and go and they come back there's constantly the new craze of what's cool and whatever was just cool is no longer cool at all anymore and everyone just wants to talk crap on it so my opinion is don't fall into that if you enjoy a certain type of optic and it works for you don't try to convince yourself you should buy something different just because everyone else is saying that is no longer the flavor of the day same time don't crap on other people's optic choices if they have a reason for it. And if they train and can run that platform well, well, then it works, right? So I've used everything. Uh, most of my experience has been running a red dot as a SWAT guy, a um, little 10-3 Colt with a red dot on top. And if all I was doing all day was clearing houses, that rifle, that red dot setup was, was fine. Um, I can also say that I've had more aim points crap out on me than anything else but that's not a fault of theirs i mean i was around a lot of aim points and i've run them for a while so their quality i'm just not a red dot guy and that's what i said if you're a red dot guy and you really want to run red dots red dot magnifiers are really in nowadays um then do it run a red dot with a magnifier there's nothing wrong with that my opinion is figure out what you like and then train with it and then you're good um I like to have something that has an etched reticle. I don't like to rely on just a red dot. So I'm big on prism optics. Uh, I like LPVOs, even though they're not the in thing right now. And I really like my mid range, like two and a half to tens. They're honestly probably my favorite type of optic to run. But as a general purpose rifle, I really like this one to eight primary arms PLXC. 
Now it's not cheap <laughs> at all. Um, but this thing is amazing. Now, some guys are going to require that daylight bright illumination. And that's perfectly fine. Um, we're all different. If you're a red, if you come from a red dot background and you just need to have that nuclear bite, bright red dot, uh, you might want something like primary arms, Nova reticle or the vortex razor, night force, NX eight attacker, uh, Steiner P four XI. I believe there's, there's a bunch out there that have that nuclear, you know, nuclear bright reticle. If that's what you need. Now me, I don't. And, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the wire reticles because they are a failure point. Um, I've had other wire type reticles in the past break on me and have to be sent in for warranty work. So I really like to have an etched reticle. And if the reticles designed well, I don't find I need to run the illumination, um, much at all. It has a good reticle. Now these are cool because they have the, uh, shake awake so I can throw the illumination on and kind of forget about it and have it at a setting that at least works well enough in low light for me. And, uh, it'll turn off when it sits for a bit. So I kind of like that, but it's kind of a secondary feature for me. I like to have a wide eye box. I like to have good field of view and I like a good reticle in my LPVOs. Now running these takes some practice. A lot of guys don't want to put the time into really run these to their fullest potential or they're guys that really should have a mid variable powered optic like a two to ten so something like that's going to have side focus it's going to work better throughout the adjustment range than an lpvo this really is a jack of all trades but it works for me as a general purpose setup um, so i find myself setting the eyepiece the ocular to my eye as you would right a normal scope you're going to adjust this until your reticle is clear now for me the reticle is clear in general but i like to adjust it to have a flat image so i'm going to adjust this until things that are you know 10 12 feet away look flat with the optic and there isn't a lot of difference between being off the optic and being on it i want to have two eyes open be able to use this optic so that's what i'm going to adjust mine to the issue with that then is when I crank this thing up to eight power and look at, you know, two, three, four, 500 yards, it, I'll have to fight between keeping the reticle in focus or the target. So if I'm going to shoot like that, I'll just have to crank this back down to zero. And I, as long as I remember that, as long as I train that, it allows me to run this thing primarily as a closer up optic, but have that ability to reach out and touch stuff. Um, and I'll get more into that as I get into optics videos, but in general, I really like this PLXC from Primary Arms. This thing's a tank, and uh, it's been treating me really well. Now, I piggyback a Holosun 508 on this one um, with a PRI, Precision Reflex Ink, uh, RMR mount, and it's been working great. If I would do it again, I'd probably mount this directly to the uh, scope mount via like a Coenco RMR mount. Um, awesome brand. If you look into some of their stuff, they're coming out with some really cool mounts that'll work with particular scope mounts on the market that no one else has top dots for. Um, so Co Co, look them up. Uh, fantastic stuff they're coming out with. But I have it on the PRI. It's been working for me. And I have a Night Force Unimount. Uh, I think it's a 1.5 height mount. I really like the Night Force mounts. I'm a big fan of don't cheap out on your scope mounts it really is important to get a quality mount now there's a lot of them out there so just do your homework and figure out what you want um, there's a lot cheaper versions than this night force mount but i really like these they work really well for me so i have it on the night force mount primary arms plxc with the hollow set on top for passive aiming or for heads up shooting or for getting me on target at distance um, so that's really cool i can I can find the target at distance with that red dot and then just sink right into the optic and it's relatively there. Um, so for distance shooting, that helps if you don't have a lot of experience on glass or if you're transitioning from target to target, it allows you to acquire that target a little faster, especially when you're at higher magnification. You don't want to lose that target outside of your window and be fishing for it. So that kind of is a little trick at distance to shoot. So I use that a little bit, but in general, I like to, uh, switch between this, uh, running the red dot and running the one X, um, at my general, like closer distance targets and kind of see which one I like better. And I don't really find much of a difference. 
I like running, running them both. So I train both of them and, uh, running the higher mount is going to come with a little bit of practice. I know it's the craze right now to run really high red dots. Um, and again, I try to tell you guys, don't just fall into that craze just because it's cool. Like everything, their cycles. If you want to run a high mount, run a, run a high mount, um, train for it and understand that it's a little bit different, uh, heads up shooting and you might have the stock in a different place and all those things, but it is a great option. I like a traditional height scope. Um, but I do enjoy having the top mount on dot on top. I wouldn't personally want just a high mount though and nothing else. <sighs> all right. I might as well show my own company real quick. <laughs> so slings, I'm running my sling retention strap and I'm running one of my two point minimalist freedom slings. Uh, it's just simple. You know, whatever your flavor sling is, go with that. Um, I like these. This is one of my, uh, kind of my test batch when I was, uh, mess around with using some rit dye and some coyote brown nylon because i want to see what would happen if i tried dyeing it a few different colors and this is kind of a funky one i came up with and i kind of dig it kind of like it it's a little dark but see how it uh fades or changes over time but yeah if you're interested in either our sling retention strap or our slings i have a link down in the description you can go check out our website i like shooting from tripods Right, so I have the bipod mount. The bipod mount's fun to throw a bipod on. Um, I also like shooting from tripod, so I've been messing around with these Arca rails. My hands are cold; hard to get this off. <laughs> I've been messing around with these Arca plates. Now this is just a cheaper one, um, and it's been working fine for me. I have it on a couple rifles. That way, I can slide this thing right into this Arca clamp, clamp it down. This isn't some crazy expensive one or anything like that, and. Now I can shoot from the tripod. Um, I ran the hog saddle for a while, the actual like vice clamp on my rifles, and that worked, but I didn't find it to be as sturdy. So I switched over to these Arca clamps recently, and they're amazing. They're, they're a lot of fun. Um, so I recommend if you're getting into more precision shooting or uh, things like that, looking into tripod setups. I'll get into those at some point as well. Um, in the future all right as you guys can see with pretty much all my rifles i like to spray paint them because it's fun and i'll dive into that in a uh, rattle can video i'll do once it gets a little nicer out but in general i enjoy painting my guns it's just fun <laughs> they're tools i don't treat them like safe cleans all right guys that's going to conclude the video for my go-to carbine i appreciate you watching all the way through if you like this content, please consider subscribing. Hit that thumbs up, that like button, and uh, throw me some comments down in the comment section. I really enjoy reading them. Uh, if you want to support us any further, you can head over to our website, www.wingatesolutionsllc.com. I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, right now, we have our slings, our sling retention straps, and we got a few more products we're hoping to get out there soon. And really been appreciating the positive feedback from you guys on that. And uh, that's about it. Until next time, get out in the woods, do some training.